Hey guys, Comic Boom here to talk about Wonder Woman issue 42, continuing this saga, which has been dragging on somewhat, but the saga of Darkseid trying to become ruler of Apocalypse again, and moving toward trying to find, we believe, Themyscira as a way to try to recruit the Themyscira army uh, in order to take over Apocalypse. Now, uh, the truth of the matter is, is that we we kind of knew that from past solicits or future solicits, and the sad part is, is that just the way advertising goes in comic books nowadays, uh, pretty much nothing is revealed in this comic that we didn't already know. Unfortunately, what we already knew from past solicits, uh, there's a couple of things that I just inferred from past issues. This issue not really much happened at all. Uh, uh, my own go my ongoing criticism of James Robinson, the writer here, uh, is. He's got a really, he's telling a good story per se, like he's got, he's got a great concept of a story. The idea, I mean, the idea of Darkseid uh, growing from a teenager to adulthood by feeding off the energies of dead old gods and killing Zeus himself and eventually becoming powerful again like he always is and him trying to, uh, uh, trying to uh, discover old god relics in order to use their energies to open a portal to Themyscira which is something Wonder Woman was unable to do, uh, is unable to do herself, uh, coming out of uh, Greg Rucka's Rebirth run. That's a pretty cool idea, and the idea that he wants to, uh, likely has some plans for Themyscira, likely being recruiting the Amazonian army in order to take over Apocalypse, that's a pretty cool concept. Unfortunately, the execution, I think, leaves a little bit to be desired here. Um, but having said that, I think that overall, uh, I, I think this will be a good story for, for at least future writers to build on, and this could end on a real big high note. Uh, what stands out in this issue are, is, it starts off with Jason f returning, he returned at the end of last issue, and Jason uh, Jason's uh, costume is, he's not wearing his blue gay capri pants, which he's worn in the past. Unfortunately, I gotta say, uh, James Robinson, uh, he, he continues to struggle with dialogue here. The Jason comes back. Jason reveals absolutely nothing. He doesn't remember anything. He talks in riddles. He talks in vagueness. He doesn't. Uh, Jason talks about meeting. He, uh, he does, he's not even sure what, where he got his costume. He's not even sure who he spoke to, other than J wherever Jason disappeared to. And in, in a couple of issues ago, he he remembers talking to giants or giants of, of some kind. Whether they're gods or not, we're not sure. A bunch of vagueness. Uh, Jason doesn't know much, but somehow he seems to know that he can fly faster than Wonder Woman. How would he even know that? He's got no idea how fast Wonder Woman can fly. How would he know this? Uh, even if he's flown with his sister in the past, which he has, she's not gone full, full bore, full throttle. He wouldn't know this. There's a lot of things that aren't making a lot of sense. You get a strong sense that James Robinson is cramming information in here where he needs it conveniently, and it feels it feels very forced in some places, but he's trying to get to the point of his story. Uh, Jason recants the tale, or pardon me, Jason recounts the tale of him uh, meeting uh, how he met Grail, which I pre which was fairly obvious. I, I, pre I mean, I, I predicted a couple... Uh, couple of reviews ago that he obviously was recruited through the deep through deep six which was he was attacked by them about I don't know four or five issues ago and obviously that was all a setup I pretty much called that it was fairly obvious it didn't need to be spelled out but James Robinson spelled it out that's how we met Grail it was all a setup the deep six attacked him and the deep six just to, just so you guys know they're like sea like creatures they work for dark side alongside the female furies uh, in this case, the Deep Six attacks Jason as all part of a setup, and Jason was defeated by the Deep Six ultimately and rescued by Grail, and that's how Grail befriended uh, uh, Wonder Woman's brother Jason and got him initially on the side of herself and Darkseid until he, Jason finally turned. Now, uh, as for the rest of it, uh, Wonder Woman ends up going to uh, Bavaria where Grail is attempting to steal one of the final relics from the Wild Huntsman. And the Wild Huntsman is, is a character, an obscure character in DC lore. He's protecting the relic. He's defeated handily by Grail. Fortunately, before he's killed, uh, Wonder Woman prevents that by coming in and wrapping her lasso around Grail, who basically tells Wonder Woman what we readers have been suspecting all along for quite some time between the comic books and future solicitations, that in fact, Grey, that, that Darkseid is simply acquiring a bunch of old god relics 
and using the old, residual old energies of the old gods, for, which are still apparently on these relics, and utilizing those energies to gain a portal into Themyscira. And before Wonder Woman can find out more, uh, Grail d reveals a new power that Grail has, which I think is interesting. And in fact, I think oh, what will prove to be ultimately the most fascinating, the, the most interesting part of this entire comic was Grail's new power. Because Grail is an offspring of both an Amazon and Darkseid, she's got the unique ability of being able to, when she focuses and concentrates long enough, able to resist the power of the magic lasso. So. Uh, I really, really like that. That's one of my favorite aspects. It's about time Wonder Woman had a villain that could render the magic lasso useless and that it's unable to work on her. Now, Grail has to work hard and focus and concentrate a little bit before she can resist the magic lasso, but I like the fact that Grail can do that because Wonder Woman deserves a villain that can, that can give her more of a challenge because one of the things that Greg Rucka did, which uh, didn't work well in my view, was he gave the magic lasso way too much power. This idea that the magic lasso wraps around uh, multiple you know multiple superpower villains and suddenly they're rendered useless and they can you know and then Wonder Woman supplicates herself and it's just it's frank I find it it's an embarrassment it's it, it's just taking it a little bit too far it's nice to know that at least there's one villain grail that's not going to take any of that crap and at least it's going to be more challenging and Wonder Woman's actually going to have to you know have some fisticuffs to uh, defeat grail as opposed to just throwing a magic lasso around her because that's a cop out it doesn't make for exciting comic book reading and that's really it, and uh, basically it ends with uh, it ends with uh, Darkseid given the order that since Grail failed, Grail failed, that Darkseid's going to have to. Uh, Darkseid comes up with the plan that well, if he failed, then the the other relics are being kept on by Argus because at Argus headquarters, and so it ends with uh, Darkseid giving the order to basically attack Argus. They're going to they're going to open a portal so they can use the residual, residual energies to transport themselves uh, pretty much anywhere, but not, they can't, because they don't have all the relics, they can't transport themselves to Themyscira, but what they can do is transport themselves right into the heart of Argus headquarters where they can acquire the final relics uh, and that's very significant and that's what's going to happen and uh, it, it's T's next issue that it's Argus is going to be attacked and you can bet that's going to be a, a pretty epic battle next issue we hope in issue 43. So overall I like this issue again the art's fantastic great cover uh, kudos uh, James Robinson the writer again uh, Jesus Marino is the artist Rom Romulo Fajuto Jr. is the colorist and this guy he's a great colorist the, the colors really here pop off the page so it's a great artistic team uh, shout out to to Seda uh, Temafonte, who's the letterer again, does a great job on that. Uh, Brian Hitch and Alex Sinclair on the cover. Jenny Friss and of course the, the uh, alternate cover. And um, David uh, Wilgo's assistant editor, Chris Conroy, editor, James S. Rich, group editor. And thank you to William Moulton Morrison for creating Wonder Woman in the first place. So guys, uh, things are heating up here. This is, I think this is one of those uh, comic books that's sort of going under the radar and missed by a lot of people. I think it's a lot of fun and I think it's building up to something pretty cool here. So guys, check out Wonder Woman number 42. And in the meantime, Comic Boom, out.